What's going on guys? Welcome back to another War Thunder video. Today we're taking out the Premium Boomerang. Specifically the Mark 1. This is the very first boomerang in the British Tech Tree. Although this is in the British Tech Tree, this is actually an Australian aircraft. This is one of the very few Australian aircraft in the game. And after flying it for the first time just recently, it makes me wonder if we're ever going to get any more Australian aircraft added to the game. I certainly wouldn't mind some I don't think Australia had a whole lot of aircraft to their to their name, but I, I know there are a couple of other aircraft that, that we could see at the War Thunder at some point. I mean, this is actually my very first flight with the Boomerang in Realistic Battles. Although this is the first time that I took it out, this is the only time that I took it out. I did fly this in a handful of other battles. I've had mixed mixed results so far. So far I've had a hell, hell of a time taking on Germany. It's predominantly because of the 109 G2 Trop. It's it's like a whole another class of aircraft compared to this thing. The Boomerang is a, is a very good little turn fighter. And that's it. It climbs alright. I was actually impressed by the fact that this engine doesn't overheat until about 3 or 4 minutes of climbing with WEP enabled. But the climb rate is not, it's not monstrous. You're not going to be able to compete for altitude with the uh, with the 109s and, and what have you and it, it makes me wonder if if we need to seriously discuss changing not necessarily the battle rating of the 109 G2 trop but maybe change the the spread in matchmaking so that instead of a, a plus or minus 1.0 spread we get a plus or minus 0 0.7 spread I think that would help out a lot with not only matchmaking in airplanes but also tanks I think it would be a oh, welcome change. So first kill of the match comes right here with a simple head-on with the P-39. He came in, and I, get, I do have air targets with this boomerang, surprisingly. I didn't expect the, the new air targets to be an option for the boomerang, but here they are, and they, they work magnificently. I was going to dive on the lightning, but I didn't expect him to pitch up and go head-on. So that caught me by, by surprise. In this match, we're in preparation for Hokkaido. We're up against the Americans. And you know what? I have to give it to this American team. This is one of the more disciplined American teams that I've seen in quite a while. Sometimes in in the videos that I that I upload, you know, we'll see an American team, you know, dogfighting, you know, A six M twos and doing just doing stupid, absolutely stupid stuff. But here, some of these Americans are actually using their their planes correctly and booming and zooming and not giving up all their altitude. This actually made for an an interesting match. This wasn't just a you know a, a one-sided affair. You see, a Corsair, Corsair is up is still up high. I want to drag him down as best I can. A P-47 up high. Surprisingly, they all climbed. And with this being my first match in the in the boomerang, I know basically how I want to fly it, but I don't know what this aircraft's limits are. I don't know what's what speed I, I can push this. This plane too. I just know generally what I want to do, and that's drag these guys low, get them into a turn fight, because eventually everyone will lose their patience at some point and will do something stupid. It's really just a matter of time. As I went for the P-47, I noticed the Corsair was closing on me, and now the P-47 is, is working with the Corsair. I got some actual teamwork here. What the heck is going on? <laughs> All right, so I tried to drag him low and get him into a turn fight. That just didn't work. P-47, Corsair, and the Hellcat are still up high. Just waiting for them to get a little impatient and come on down to play. Because I'm certainly not going to be able to climb up to there and, and engage them at, at altitude. P-47 is diving. He's, he's closing. Dive down, do a little split ass, get him even lower. Eventually, it'll get these guys lower. The lower I can get them, the better. Because this thing is not a boom zoomer. This is not. Re I'm not even really sure if it's a, if it's a, if it's a great energy fighter. I haven't I haven't used it a whole lot. My first my first few experiences with this plane. It's it's definitely feels like a slower Spitfire Mark II B. P47 is coming in awfully hot. Got two targets down here. He's getting a little low. Better pull up. Pull up. 
And he's dead. <laughs> yeah, that's that P-47, man. The uh, compression is pretty strong on that thing. Just like the P-40. So the P-47 comes down. Takes out my teammate. We go head on. Very, very risky. Same thing here. Very risky. I don't necessarily recommend it, but I don't have a whole lot of teammates in the area to support me. Most of them are over by the base. The Hellcat overestimates the amount of energy that I had. I had just enough to pitch up and take him out. You can see that these rounds are just, just ignite everything. When you do run out of cannon ammunition, just remember you still have plenty of uh, small caliber ammunition. This thing comes with 4,000 rounds of machine gun ammo. The 7.7s don't do a lot of damage on their own, but when you when you use 4,000 rounds, you're going to whittle away a plane. Slowly, slowly but surely, you're going to see that, that plane slowly disintegrate. I've actually managed to take down multiple bombers with just the 7.7mm machine guns. Now the P-47 booked it towards the other runway, but it looks like his Corsair buddy might have an interest in this. We've got a Hellcat, got a Spitfire and a Typhoon over here to give us a hand. See, it looks, looks like he's dropping. Just a matter of who is he going to go after. If he's going to go after me, I'm going to make him make it a, a bit of a challenge. Just go low, go evasive. There he goes. He gives he gives up all of his altitude for one one, one shot at a, at a at a Hellcat, and he almost rams into him and head on. Nobody won that. In fact, he 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 nearly lost that. He he almost rammed into him. He could have just as easily been shot down. There gets some pack of loss. And he finally did his uh, zoom part of the uh, the uh, boom and zoom, but he's still not at at what I would say his original altitude was. So, was it worth it? I don't I don't necessarily think so. Now what he should be doing is working with his P forty seven teammate and coming after us. And instead, it looks like he went head on with the typhoon and the typhoon won. <laughs> no big surprise there. P forty seven realizes that he's all alone now. These two should have been working better together with one another. It's it's unfortunate that these two guys just weren't weren't really part of a team. I've been on on multiple teams where where strangers have actually been able to work together and and, and deal with an enemy. You don't necessarily have to be on uh, on voice comms to be able to work work together. Now that the P forty seven realizes that he's all alone, he decides to turn around, go the other way. Now, you see, now here you'll see one of the weaknesses of the boomerang. It just does not have a po very powerful engine. Despite all of my teammates starting out behind me, all of these guys are going to actually surpass me and go chase down that P-47 before I can even get get to within a couple of kilometers. It's it's frustrating. There's there's really no other word that I could use to accurately describe flying the boomerang against or for that matter with you know alongside better planes. The distinctive lack of speed with the boomerang means you're going to have a, a challenge competing for kills. What, what you're going to have to do is to basically do what I tried to do, and that is get get guys low and slow, and get them into turn fights, much like you would a you know an, an early Spitfire or a, or a Zero, because it just does not have the speed to compete. It could be entirely different if you're down tiered. Every match that I've played with the boomerang has been I've been up tiered. I've been fighting 3.3 .3 battle rating planes and up. So that means 3.3 .3 to 4.3. If you're you know if you're if you're down tiered so that you're you're facing 2.3 to 3.3 .3 planes then then you're going to stand a better chance. But 3.3 .3 and above it's it's a it's a real challenge I'm afraid. I'm thinking arcade might might be where this plane is best suited. This plane used to be flown all the time in arcade until it got up tiered until into oblivion. Really, it was absurd. I think a 4.0 was the last BR that I saw for it. it it's since been lowered, I believe, to 3.3. Arcade battles tend to have a lot more of the lower altitude, lower speed turn fights, you know, fur balls. So I'm thinking that the uh, boomerang will will do quite well in those. I think it's probably better suited for arcade than realistic. After several minutes of chasing, 
I just gave up uh, on the P47. I just went after some ground targets just to get a couple more RP and some more uh, some, some more silver lines. With two air kills and one ground to kill, managed, I still managed to rack up just over 54,000 silver lines. The vehicle research wasn't so impressive because there is a, that uh, that massive penalty for using a tier two aircraft to research a, a jet, which is just a, a huge gap there. The boomerang is a nice little plane, but it's a little slow for my taste. Anyway guys, I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. And of course, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Take care guys.